Hello, world. This is Jason Kolker. I'm here with Matthew Crowley. And Matthew, I'm going to let you introduce yourself in just a second. But you clarified for me, you are Rob Crowley's nephew, Tim Crowley's son, Lynn Crowley's stepson, stepson. Uh, am I missing anyone relationship wise? Really? And uh, Mary Crowley's grandson. Oh, Mary Crowley's grandson. And I know Mary Crowley from, you may not know this, but from the library, helping her one day with computer stuff. Mm -hmm. So good. I know them all. Uh, that's my introduction of you. But what about your introduction of yourself? Well, I'm a huge stage fan. Uh -huh. I've seen everything from from uh, Death of a Salesman and uh, Virginia Woolf to Rent and Les Miserables and, 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 and the Phantom of the Opera. And so to see all that stuff, you did not see it in Marfa. you got to be, what, Chicago, New York? Yeah, I've seen some in New York and others in... Um, Houston. In Houston. Where you, where did you grow up mostly? Where you, have you lived? Well, I've lived in Houston, in College Station, in Marfa, in, um, in, in California, in Massachusetts. Where in California? Sacramento. Are you, are you Texan or Californian? I, I, I'm a Texan. I was born in Lubbock. On, oh. on Wednesday, December 10th, 1980. And how is it that you know the day that you were born instead of just the date, like most of us? Are you astrological? Mm, not, not really, but I am a monkey. Uh, <laughs> well, I was, I was You're born, born in the year? Okay. You're born in the year, Chinese year of the monkey? Yeah. Okay. What, well, do you, are you astrological? Do you know your sign? Do you care? I know I'm a Sagittarius. And does it mean anything to you? Mm, not really. Okay, let me, I want to cut to the chase about the thing that struck me most about you. You seem to always say peace, love, and happiness is kind of like uh, your, your, your calling card. Mm -hmm. Where did that come from? Oh, uh, I've, I've been saying that for years. I don't even remember where I came from. Oh, I don't believe that. When did you start saying it? Um, I don't even remember when I started saying it, actually. Well, tell us this. How did you get to Marfa, Texas? Well, my, um, in 1997, <laughs> my dad brought me here. Actually, it was in, in July. Actually, it was late August. Wait, hold on. It was the, the month before July, um, in 1997. And, yeah, and that's how I got here. And given that you had lived in uh, bigger cities, Houston, and you said Sacramento, mm -hmm. uh, were you disappointed to be here because of the size? Or did you, like a lot of us, think that you'd reach this place it was just so much easier and kind of uh sunnier literally <laughs> i really at first i didn't know what to think about this place but after a while i really liked it so how long did that take um a couple a couple of years oh, a couple of years that's a long time mm -hmm. and so what tell me about those first two years what was it like not liking more um that was way back in 97. Uh, I remember it was in 97 because the first time I came out here, um, my dad's father died of an aneurysm in the brain. Okay. That was a, that's when you first came out here. Mm -hmm. And I was 16. Let me change the question to this. What happened for you to start liking the place? And, and when did that start happening? It started happening, I guess, when you were around 18. You'd been here for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. um, and what turned you around? The friendliness of everyone. Mm -hmm. it, it, it just felt like home to me. And have you always been using the recumbent bicycle? Since 2001. Oh, but you got here in 97. 
-hmm. So how were you getting around in 97, 98, 99, 2000? I, w I was walking. Huh. And you, you walk slowly, correct? Yes. Okay. What do you think of Marfa now in, two, in 2013? And it is, this is August of 2013. I really like it, actually. Why do you like it? Um, because it's a, sm it's a small town and everyone's friendly and nice. Well, I don't know about that. You are friendly and nice for sure. And maybe that's a, the lesson. Everyone's friendly and nice to you. But that's good. I, I agree with you by and large, though. The town does have... It's almost... It's a cliche, but it's almost like a family-like community. Even when you're upset with someone, you're generally friendly and nice to them because you have to see them time and time again. Mm-hmm. Uh, and how long have you been living in this spot? Well, in this exact house since, I think... Late February 2008. Okay, so when I walked in here, do you remember my first question to you? I asked you, I said, are you the most easygoing person in the world? Because I see, <laughs> you, said, you said come in, you're kind of like uh, in your pajamas, you're doing a puzzle. You didn't seem to pay too much attention to me. But I see now that the whole house is kind of designed. It's a ground level place, right? Yeah. And it's got couches and... Chairs, but it's all kind of uh, a low-level place. Was this designed for you? Mm-hmm. You agreed that you were one of the most easygoing people in the world. What makes you not easygoing? Tell me what makes you upset or n not at the peak of your game, so to speak. Um, well, I really don't like it when people are mean to each other. Mm. That doesn't make me feel good. But when does that happen in, in Marfa? Do you see that much? No, I don't. Mm -hmm. Did you see it much in, in other places you've lived? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Houston, I'm thinking, maybe? Mm -hmm. And what about anything else? No, not really. What about uh, if, you're, if you're a big fan of show tunes, which you are in shows, uh, you don't get to see many of them here. Well, every year they have one in, in Alpine, and, and depending on what it is, I go and see it. What was it this year? This year it was the, the Pirates of Penzance, and every year they do a good job for a local. <laughs> for a local. Uh, Theater. Right. G give me an, a day for you. What's a day like for you here in, in Marfa, Texas? Well, I wake up at 6 in the morning, and at 9 I go to my father's office, I, uh, I, I check the mail, I, um, I go to the post office in the bank, and I do all that, and then I come back here, open up the mail, and um, at 11.30 I, I go to the... Shark and, and, and I get my l lunch. Mm -hmm. I'm back here eating uh, by noon, usually. And then, let, let, let's see. And then I do uh, a bunch of different things in the afternoon. So why, why do you get up at 6 a.m.? Is it because you go to bed early? Well, uh, I, I like to... Um, to, to, to get started with my day slowly, mm -hmm. and that's why I get up. Why are you as happy as you are, do you think? Is there a lesson to be learned there, or is it just genetic? I don't know why I'm as happy as I am. I well, are you happy? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I just wanted to clarify that. Okay, but you don't know. There's no, there's no lesson to impart or anything. No. Well, I have a theory. Can I sh share with you my theory? Mm -hmm. it's, this is actually kind of pessimistic. But to me, uh, you know, there, there's so many books. If you go to a bookstore or a library on happiness, it fills up a whole section. I don't think they do much. I think being happy is a characteristic. It's, a lot, it's like saying someone's tall and asking, how can I be tall? And um, some people... Uh, some people just seem very happy and others don't. And there's not a lot in life, I think, that can change it. Do you share that observation or do you think there are secrets and tricks? Or I don't think there are, are any secrets and tricks 
you, you just have to do what you love doing and, and happiness will follow. And what do you think that is for you? Um, well, I, I love going to musicals and plays. <laughs> I love um, doing puzzles. I, of, I, I love watching TV and playing video games and stuff. Which video games? Give us some recommendations. Um, I love the Legend of Zelda series of games. Mm -hmm. I love the Metroid series of games. I um, like Mario, of course. Uh, and give us some, give us top five uh, shows, musicals. My top five are the Phantom of the Opera, Lion King, um, Mary Poppins, um, Starlight Express, mm -hmm. and what's the fifth one? Phantom of the Opera, uh, Mary Poppins, Lion King, Starlight Express, and what? give us one more. Um, well, I really, really liked West Side Story. Oh yeah, I, I would have put that at the top. People, are you were, are you a Donald Judd fan? Are you an art fan at all? Um, well, I, well, it depends what you call art. Um, um, theater, though. Yeah. Did you see what I did when I asked you if you were an art fan? The first thing I did is I looked around the place because uh -huh. I can usually kind of assess or guess what people like. And for you, let's see. There's a bunch of albums, vinyl albums of shows. Uh, there's a Lion King looking guy over there, and uh, I love musicals. So clearly you are into art, but my question is then, I'll refine it, are you into Donald Judd style abstract art? Uh, sort of. Not too much. I'm, I'm, I'm helping you. Are you, are you. When you say sort of, come on. You, are, you, are you too nice to say that you don't like boxes? Mm -hmm. <laughs> huh. um, good, okay, can I ask you uh, more stuff about art and uh, musicals and stuff? Yeah. So you know Rob Crowley is working on uh, Three Penny Opera, mm -hmm. and he's saying that that might be ready for 2014. Mm -hmm. If you, or have you ever considered directing anything or participating in any of this stuff? Well, speaking of that, um, I did write one of the 24-hour plays last year. Oh, that's right, you did, and that was, a, that was a, a, hold on, I remember complimenting you about it, remember that? What, which one was it? It was the one with, um, with my dog. Was it the one with the police stopping? Yeah. Yeah, people, and... Remind me of it. Well, it was about a couple on their honeymoon, and they were going to Mexico on their honeymoon, and um, they got stopped at the border, and that's basically all that it was. And how did you write it? Was it... Uh... Well, I, I wrote it with JP mm -hmm. in my kitchen, um, and we just looked at the picture... And thought of a story from the picture they gave us. And did you have any temptation to direct as well? No. Do you have one now? No. Are you going to be writing for another 24-hour play? I'm leaning more towards yes. Can I tell you my recommendation if you do it again? What? Do the same couple afterwards. I don't think there's ever been a sequel in the 24-hour plays. That could be the first one. Uh -huh. <laughs> when was the last time you were out of town? Um... Well, the last time I was out of town was when I saw the musical Flash Dance in Houston. Um, Are you interested or do you uh, find yourself involved in town politics or anything like that? I'm not interested in, in any politics. Oh, even national politics? Yeah, even national. Maybe that's why you're happy. What about the, the beagle there? Who's that? That um, is an art piece by Sam Seanzite, and it's actually a basset hound, not a beagle.
How is that an art piece? It looks like a guy cut out a cardboard basset hound. Um, you know, it's art because a person calls it art. <laughs> <laughs> what, about, what about the thing behind it, the big the, uh, thing on the wall? The painting is done by, um, I forget who, but I think she has cerebral palsy. Someone you know, a friend? A friend of a friend. And what is what what is your ailment? I, I have CP, cerebral palsy. Same thing. And just to clarify, because not all of us understand, that's that uh, affects muscles. Mm -hmm. And is or is it something that changes as you get older? I don't think so. Mm -hmm. And yet, I just have to observe. It it doesn't seem to slow you down. No, it doesn't. It doesn't, huh? But no. it must have. It must have at some point. It must have been something that. Uh, cause a lot of difficulty? Well, I, I did, um, <laughs> growing up, I did, um, get call names in school, and I don't, I didn't like it, of course. Do you have any creative ambitions as far as continuing to write or anything like that? Well, I there are a few things I want to do with uh, writing, as far as, as far as writing for the stage. Um, I would like to write um, a play, a, a serious play. It will have some comedy to it too, um, but it will be mostly serious about Alzheimer's. Why? How did you how did that come up? Well, uh, I don't think there has ever been a play, uh -huh. a famous play, about Alzheimer's. And, uh, and I would like to write one. Well, that, you know what that reminds me of is when I very first heard about the play Rent. The, mm -hmm. the, 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 about AIDS? Yeah, and I thought, how can this actually ever be a musical, much less a successful one? And then when I saw it, I actually thought it was kind of funny. Rint is based on the opera La Boheme oh, by Puccini. Yeah, I had heard that. I never really thought about it until just now. The plot is similar. Mm -hmm. Okay, what's this thing around your neck? It's, it's, I've, I've had this for years. It means eternal life. It's an ancient Egyptian symbol. It's, a, it's an onk. A-N-K-H. A-N-K-H. So, getting back to happiness, do you think it's contagious? And I'll, I'll give you a very specific example. Have you ever had an experience where you're going down the street and uh, you pass someone who seems maybe not to be having the best of days and you do your peace, love, and happiness thing and they light up or it kind of changes the tone of things? Yeah, I have a few times. Well, I'm, I know how I'm going to sign off. I'm going to say goodbye. I know, how are you going to sign off? Peace, love, and happiness. Thank you very much, Matthew.